I play Nate Jacobs, who is, I suppose, on the surface level, this kind of ultra-violent, obnoxious jock type. And he's kind of just like this really frightened little boy in an enormous, aggressive body. You're a strong man, Nathaniel. You have an iron will. I always admire that in you, because someday it will lead you to greatness. When I was uh, developing the character and putting it all together, I have this journal, and his father was like the centerpiece of the entire journal. I had this, this big photo of Eric Dane in the middle of the book, and then I would sort of form everything around it. You, you see at the start of episode two, from an incredibly young age, Nate has been obsessed with sort of his dad's secret life, and it's kind of formed everything about him. You know, he has no idea what a normal family is supposed to look like. I guess Jules is kind of like the ultimate threat. In a very literal sense, she is the thing that has been plaguing his life, essentially, since he's been watching these tapes. So literally, she is physically the problem. Um, and then also, she kind of poses a threat to masculinity and to order and to everything that is conventional and straight. So I think Jules is is terrifying to him. All right, let's fucking go! So when we were doing football practice, I talked to the quarterback coaches that sort of taught me through it, and they told me that when a quarterback is on the field, they look at the lineup, and if someone from the other team moves over there, they their brains go into like overdrive, and they know like they'll shuffle someone from there to there. Like they're always like staying ahead of it, and they're always sort of proactive. And I kind of took that into everything that 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 Nate does. I would sort of play all the scenes and play everything as if it was like, it was like a football game, as if there was something that he was like just trying to stay ahead of everything. And it was like, it was kind of like chess pieces. If anyone ever try to hurt you, I'd kill them. You're like the sweetest guy ever. I think the thing with Maddie, what, what is really interesting, he's incredibly vulnerable when he's around her. She is this part of his life. She's kind of like this safe place. And then when it got taken away from him, it almost feels like the ultimate betrayal. The sort of the power complex with him and girls comes from that thing of needing to win and needing to be strong. And if he can, if he can dominate them and if he can own them, then he can keep everything in order and he can keep it the way that it's supposed to be, which is straight and, and do you, you know what I mean? And conventional and like, if he can keep it down those lines, then everything will be okay and he won't end up like his dad. So when, things don't go that way is when he starts to get like super aggressive and, 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 and super angry. And they hurt you. No, 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 no. Yeah, and you're not gonna press charges because if you do, you're gonna go to jail for a lot longer than I will. Please. Depending on what I do to you. I think sort of deep down, what he's really looking for is, is, is for the freedom to like, to be able to, to, to be like, to be like Jules, to be like, Everyone else, the freedom to be able to let it go and, and sort of not have this, this crushing burden that's sort of weighing him down all the time. I think his like ultimate thing that he would be looking for would be for someone to tell him that like, that it's okay. 